Robin Williams was the actor who could be just about anyone. Such was his command over his craft that he effortlessly slipped into the skin of any character, making it his own in every way. In February of 1978, Robin Williams appeared on America's television screens as an extraterrestrial named Mork in an episode titled My Favorite Orkin of the 1970s sitcom Happy Days. Mork had come to Earth to find a specimen who he could take back to his planet, Ork. Such was Williams' impact and screen presence that a small cameo was enough to convince producer Gary Marshall that Williams deserved and could pull off his own show. This conviction and faith in Williams' capabilities led to Mork and Mindy. On September 14, 1978, American audiences received a formal introduction to the show's two protagonists, Mork, an extraterrestrial being who arrives on Earth in an eggshell rocket, and Mindy, a beautiful female journalist who had just been ditched by her boyfriend. Come to think of it, there was nothing believable and convincing about the entire story. The whole idea of an alien traveling to Earth, falling in love with a woman, and settling in Boulder, Colorado was entirely far-fetched and unconvincing. However, Williams' zany portrayal of the character and his madcap energy was enough to keep audiences entertained. In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the little-known facts about this wacky and entertaining series. Make sure you stick around until the end of the video to find out what the fifth season of Mork and Mindy would have looked like if the show wasn't canceled. Facts First presents 16 Mork and Mindy facts that will make you say Shazbot. If you're a Robin Williams fan, click that like button to show you're keeping his memory alive. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell for more videos like this. Gary Marshall auditioned several actors for the role of Mork. In his 2009 book, I'm Dying Up Here, Heartbreak and High Times in Stand-Up Comedy's Golden Era, author William Nodelsater revealed that both Richard Lewis and Robin Williams auditioned for the role of Mork. Both the actors were asked to present their version of an alien voice. Richard did a Danish accent that he himself found unconvincing. He thereafter told the show's producers that Robin Williams was also auditioning for the role, and if they didn't give him the part, they would be crazy. Other than Richard Lewis, actors Dom DeLuise and Roger Rees were also considered for the role. We owe the character of Mork to producer Gary Marshall's son. Not many people know this, but producer Gary Marshall first conceptualized the idea of an alien visiting planet Earth after his son asked him a very crucial question during his Happy Days stint. Why can't there be an alien on Happy Days? The question had Gary Marshall thinking. He looked back for inspiration and found his aha moment in an episode titled It May Look Like a Walnut of the 1960s sitcom The Van Dyke Show. In the episode, Rob Petrie, the show's lead character, dreams that Earth is being invaded by walnut-eating aliens. The show ends with Rob torturing Laura, the show's female lead, by scaring her with details of Kolak, a visitor from the planet Twilo. In essence, the idea of Kolak gave birth to the idea of Mork. Mork's spacesuit came from Star Trek. The character of Mork may have been inspired by the Van Dyke show, but his red jumpsuit came from Star Trek, the original series. The red spacesuit Mork wears was worn by actor Philip Pine, who played the role of Colonel Green, in an episode titled The Savage Curtain. The suit went up for sale in 2014 with a starting bid of $20,000. It's hard to believe that a simple prop could be worth so much money. If you remember this iconic red jumpsuit, show us by clicking the like button. Pam Dauber was cast as Mindy without her knowledge. Pam Dauber, Mork's Mindy, was a relatively unknown name until 1978. Dauber had filmed a sitcom pilot for a TV series called Sister Terry, in which she appeared as a former gang member who renounces her associations to become a nun. The makers of Mork and Mindy did not shoot a pilot for the show. Instead, they put together shots from Mork's Happy Days appearance and Dauber's Sister Terry role. No intimation was given to Dauber regarding this. As a matter of fact, she found out she had been cast as Mindy when her agent read the news in Variety. Dauber also didn't know Williams and met him for the first time when they were shooting the show's title sequence. Here's another interesting fact about Pam Dauber. A profile published in People magazine revealed that Gary Marshall asked Dauber to wear a padded bra to, quote, fill out her role. Dauber declined the idea and the request was never raised again. Mindy could have been Melissa or Marlo. In 2006, Marley Brandt published Happier Days, Paramount Television's classic sitcoms 1974 to 1984, in which Brandt gave the inside scoop on the most popular shows of the era. In the book, Brandt mentions that producer Gary Marshall first suggested the names Melissa and Marlo for Dauber's character. However, he finally settled on Mindy. 
Good too, as Mindy sounds better than both Melissa and Marlo, and also has a nice ring to it. One of the cliffhanger episodes was shot in 3D. Mork and Mindy maintained consistently high ratings during its first three seasons. However, towards the fourth season, the audience began to lose interest in the plot, which in turn reflected on the show's ratings too. To boost the show's ratings, the show's producers tried all kinds of tricks to get the viewers interested. One such trick was shooting part three of the cliffhanger finale, Gotta Run, in 3D. Unfortunately, when the time to air the episode came, the show had already been canceled, and thus the network refused to spend money on showing the episode in 3D. The episode Gotta Run, therefore, aired in 2D. Producers ran a national contest to decide Mindy and Mork's baby's name. Yet another gimmick that producers employed to boost the show's rating was giving a baby to Mindy and Mork in season 4, and running a national contest to decide the baby's name. In a way, however, the contest was a farce. The producers had already decided that Mork and Mindy's baby would be called Mirth. They decided to wait until someone submitted the same name to release results, and surprising as it is, one of the viewers recommended the name Mirth. Legendary comedian Jonathan Winters, who Williams admired and respected, played Mork's son. Ralph Jaynes was the voice behind the character of Orson. Orson was Mork's unseen supervisor, who was also at the receiving end of many of Mork's jokes. He only appeared in his silhouette form and was continually baffled by human behavior, as well as humans' tendency to fight and quarrel and display their emotions. Like other inhabitants of Mork's planet, Orson too did not understand human emotions. Ralph Jaynes is the voice and character actor who gave his voice to the character of Orson. James also worked on Pink Panther cartoons and was most popularly known for lending his voice to Mr. Turtle in the popular How Many Licks Tootsie Pop commercial. Jay Leno had auditioned for the role of Remo da Vinci. In Mork and Mindy, Remo da Vinci was the co-owner of the New York Delicatessen. The character kept the audiences entertained through his constant bickering with his sister, Jeannie. Not many people know this, but Jay Leno was one of the actors who had auditioned for the role of Remo da Vinci. However, producer Gary Marshall turned him down, saying his face would scare children. In the end, actor Jay Thomas was picked to play the role. I guess it worked out for Jay Leno in the end, as he was still able to enjoy a very successful career. Mork and Mindy got their trading cards in 1979. In 1979, Topps Company Incorporated decided to release the Mork and Mindy trading cards for the fans of the show. Each card showed a still from the show, with cartoon bubbles elaborating the dialogue. On the backside of some of these cards, the manufacturing company decided to include extra information about the show's stars. For instance, card number 31 revealed that Robin Williams' favorite actor was Peter Lorre. In fact, Williams had every line from both Casablanca and the Maltese Falcon memorized by heart. William Shatner made a guest appearance on the show and was paid in formal wear. William Shatner has always been a big deal. In his seven decades long career, other than playing several memorable characters, with the most memorable being James T. Kirk of the USS Enterprise in Star Trek, Shatner has also written several books. However, when Shatner appeared on Mork and Mindy's final season, he did not take his fee in cash. Instead, he did the gig for a $2,500 suit. Shatner appeared in the episode titled Mork, Mindy, and Mirth Meet Milt in a Bathrobe. It was only one of the many Happy Day spinoffs. Mork and Mindy was a spinoff of the Happy Days episode, in which Mork visits Milwaukee to kidnap Richie and take him back to his planet. The show Happy Days was quite popular, and led to seven spinoffs in total. However, only two of these spinoffs became successful. One was Mork and Mindy, and the other was Laverne and Shirley. The show often ran into trouble with censors. Going by today's dramas, Mork and Mindy was a family show. However, believe it or not, back in the day, the show often ran into problems with censors. For instance, in one of the episodes, Susan Taylor, played by Morgan Fairchild, tells Mork she's pregnant. This dialogue may seem completely normal to you today. However, when the episode was aired, censors asked the team to remove the word pregnant from the dialogue and episode. You can visit Mindy's home. Mindy's home stands to this day at 1619 Pine Street, a few blocks away from the famous Pearl Street Mall. However, the house has undergone a few changes over time. Instead of the iron fence that was shown in the series, the house now has a wooden fence and the trees have grown much larger. You can visit the McConnell's Music Store, the shop owned by Mindy's father. The building stands to this day. However, where the shop was now exists an Athleta, Gap's Yoga Apparel Store. 
Here's another fun fact. Marshall chose Boulder as the show's location as he had a niece attending school in Boulder. And so, Boulder was the first place that came to his mind while writing the show's pilot. William and Dauber lent their voices to their animated versions. Though the show was pulled off the air after its fourth season, it eventually came back on TV as part of a larger Saturday morning cartoon, Mork and Mindy slash Laverne and Shirley slash Fonz Hour. The show was produced by Hanna-Barbera Productions and aired on ABC between 1982 and 1983. The show featured Mork and Mindy studying together in high school. Robin Williams and Pam Dauber lent their voice to their animated versions. In the cartoon version of the show, Mork always had a dog named Doing. The fifth season would have seen Mork and Mindy traveling back into time. The fifth season of the show proposed a scenario in which Mindy and Mork would have to travel back in time to escape an assassination attempt by the assassin Kalnick, Joe Regalbuto. The season's conceptualization also envisioned Mindy and Mork meeting famous historical figures, including Abraham Lincoln and Ben Franklin. To make the entire idea more believable, the producers also did a photo shoot with Honest Abe. However, ABC decided to pull the show off air, and season 5 remained only on paper. When it came to comedic genius, no one could touch Robin Williams. He made a simple extraterrestrial being incredibly adorable, with his whirlwind of energy and impeccable comedy timing. Robin Williams as Mork was a standout actor who made people laugh and fall in love with him. Pam Dauber was beautiful and lit up the screen every time she appeared on TV. Together, Mork and Mindy were funny, endearing, and memorable. Now we'd like to hear from you. Do you think Mork and Mindy ended at the right time, or do you wish they made more episodes? Let us know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to Facts First for more videos like this.